People are very scared that ChatGPT is going to replace their job. But what if they're able to use it to advantage to land you a job? In this video, I did a mock interview with ChatGPT and led it to guide me through the meta product management interview process and see if it can help you to land the meta product manager job. And do you know that every year, less than 1% people is able to join meta and land a high paying job over $300,000 per year in meta? And if ChatGPT can help achieve that goal, that's the best investment ever. Stay until the end of the video and see if ChatGPT can actually pass the interview and make $300,000 job at Meta or not. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product and featured in Forbes. I've helped hundreds of people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startups and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, please go to pmaccelerator.io to learn more. If you want to learn the most effective way to become product manager, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified every time I enter a new video every Wednesday. If you find the video useful, make sure to give us a thumb up and let's continue. There are three types of interview questions at Meta. One is product sense, the second is product metrics, which is execution interview, the third is behavioral interview and leadership. In this video, we'll focus on product metrics and product execution interview because in my last video, I already evaluated actually how ChatGPT passed the product sense, product design interview in the Google product manager interview. You can check out this video right here. His answer is pretty good. So therefore, this video will focus on product metrics interview so you can give me a really good metrics. So here is my interview methodology. Number one, I use the real life interview questions and meta. So to make sure the bar is very high, you can download the top 50 real life interview questions for product management and meta and other companies by going to this website right here and download in the description as well. And second, I put on my last free training showing how exactly is the best product manager sample answers and framework to pass a meta product metrics interview. So I compare ChatGPT answers with my answer. You can check out this video, best answer right here. Then I start to ask ChatGPT this question. Set the goal for a Facebook event. But the first time ChatGPT heard it, didn't understand the question and didn't understand set a goal means. So it actually gave back the answer to me saying that, well, you can set different goals, depends on the organization, some company. And then I tell ChatGPT that this is actually a Facebook event as a feature, as a product feature. What would you design the success metrics for the feature? And then it started giving me a better answer. ChatGPT started to talk about the goals of the users and the company because they need to get connected of the features and the company goals. And however, it only talks about high level examples. For example, uh, look at way to increase the visibility of event or Facebook platforms. But in the product manager interview, we need the exact metric the product manager can use to measure the success of the product. So therefore, I asked a specific question to guide ChatGPT. So what is the success metric? And then it started to give me the interview ready answer. See below. Event creation and attendance. One metric for Facebook event features number event created and attended on the platform. This is pretty good. And I also talk about overall engagement adoption of features, talk about user engagement, RSVP show up and comment and revenue generation and user satisfaction, which means through survey and net promoter scores to show how great the event is. Um, however, I don't really like this answer as much because it should broke down the whole metric into different categories to help the uh, interviewer to understand what exactly is your thinking process. And especially in the free training right here, I frequently talk about the two-sided marketplace framework for Meta because Meta is known for two-sided marketplace. And I started guided to have a better answer, but I do like it. It's already going into the right direction. And I asked ChatGPT this question. So what do you think is a North Star metrics of Facebook event? And then it started to give me the North Star metric for Facebook event as the monthly active user who create or attend the event. The answer is kind of okay. So, which means it combined the active user by event creators and event attendees. In real life interview, we need to break it into half. So you measure the activity on both sides of the marketplace. 
but it's kind of towards the right direction. And here's the important tip for all of you guys. If you want to pass the Meta Product Manager interview, you need to use the right framework, which is my computer science PhD framework. It stands for mission and why, customer segmentation, uh, P stands for priorities and North Star, H stands for product health, V stands for de-risk. When ChatGPT answers the questions, it didn't follow the framework, so that's why it's kind of random. So I asked it to follow my framework and the answer gets better. And I asked, what do you think is the mission ready metrics for Facebook event feature? And it started to give me a better answer. Talk about mission ready metrics, talk about company's mission, community building mission, user engagement, Go reach from Facebook perspective under each mission and give me different mission related metric. For example, for mission related metric for Facebook event feature, talk about the number of new community forms. This is pretty good. And user engagement, that's always important management. And go reach in regarding to bring the world closer together. This is definitely going to help you to pass the interview for bringing the mission of company, bring the world closer together. It's, it's getting very smart. Smart and smarter through um, the guidance based on what kind of questions you ask it. Um, and then I ask this question, hey, what are the technical metrics you should follow for Facebook event? And now the answer wasn't good because it started to give me like event creation, event discovery, event engagement, performance, mobile usage, and actually only the performance is more closer to technical metrics we need to measure. And so for that part, actually I'm going to fail ChatGPT for its bad answer. It's not hitting the goal. So therefore, I decide to um, guide it through the process and ask, are those all technical metrics? And no, so it's actually, after it recognized it was wrong, it started to give me the right answer. See the following, it started to get even better. Page load time, an error rate, R time, mobile optimization, A-B testing, and result. And all of this are leading to a really good answer in terms of, hey, those are technical issues we need to measure, except the A-B testing result. So I asked, hey, is A-B testing a method or metric? What do you think? And I said, well, it is a method. And then they gave me how to use A-B testing as a method to measure different kind of metrics. So it's finally start to recognize it did wrong, but the interview results are actually getting better. And as part of the My Computer Science PhD framework, D stands for D-risk, which is what kind of potential risk is involved in this feature. And I asked this question, what do you think different kind of risk are there? And it is really good. The risk identified is very good. It said like privacy concerns, misusage, abuse, technical issue, legal, uh, regulatory complaints. And this is definitely a pass for the risk session. So combination is that it failed the two-sided marketplace customer segmentation, but it starts to get better in terms of specific technical risk and de-risk involved. And then after my computer science PhD framework, it's for about CC, which means the counter metrics. So regarding the counter metrics, very important, I want you guys to understand what is a counter metric. Counter metrics means that when you have a certain type of metrics and the North Star metric, you need to have counter metrics to balance this out. For example, if the sales is really high, the counter metrics could be customer acquisition cost. And then I asked ChatGPT, what do you think the counter metrics for Facebook event feature? Well, the answer is pretty good. Inactive users, event abandonment, low user satisfaction, is really good. Actually, is I was like, wow, this is very good. And then in the real life interview, we'll also ask you this follow up question. What do you think the size of the event? Do you think the size of the event really matters? Should we use it as a metric? So it's, this is a discussion between you and the interviewer. Guess what ChatGPT said? It said really depends. So it's important to consider the purpose of the event and also give me different examples regarding what well, depends on goals. It said the larger the event, the more engagement of the event or could also the purpose of events not about engagement could also be let's build communities. So it's different depends on the purpose of how you use the event. So the answer is actually getting better and better. I will actually say something very similar in the interview. And towards the end, I asked the next part of framework, which is C, another C, cannibalization of Facebook event feature. And then it started helping me define cannibalization. It's like great education for all of us. Cannibalization means that if the risk of new or existing product features will compare or distract from adoption success of other product features. 
So therefore, if Facebook event feature is so popular, some other feature will not get as popular. So the answer is getting better regarding what other features are getting impacted by Facebook event feature. Here is the answer. For example, group engagement, advertising revenue, a messenger and WhatsApp, and this is actually pretty good. Well, I was like, wow, you're getting smarter and getting trained by me. This is like amazing. So therefore, what I want you guys to start to understand is that when you use ChatGPT, it's more about using the right framework to guide you through the process. So therefore, I encourage you to understand the best framework right here in this video and then use ChatGPT to advantage to understand if it can pass interview or not. But in the summary right now, I think ChatGPT actually almost passed the interview. The part that didn't pass was at the beginning talking about customer segmentation. When you wanted to think big, it wasn't that good. When you give a specific exact answer, it can give you the perfect outcome as well. So do you think ChatGPT passed the interview or not? So comment down below. Are you preparing for any product management interviews? If so, you should go to this website to download the top 50 product management interview questions database so that you can use it to prepare your upcoming interviews. Make sure to watch more playlists of ChatGPT videos right here. Like and subscribe for more tips. I'm gonna see you in my next video. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PM. Accelerator.io. See you soon. Bye.